handstand one arm pull up. This is the video for you. Hello and welcome to the Stanix YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Dennis. I have a master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences, have been a Calis athlete for 12 years, and have been coaching calisthenics athletes full-time under the banner of Stenix for the last six years. Today, we will look at the one-arm pull-up, or OAP for short. In typical Stenix fashion, we will do so by looking at one of our client's journeys, Martin, to give relatable context. In this video, you will learn why we think that the one-arm pull-up is one of the most underrated and botched skills in calisthenics. You will also get a skill tree and learn the right technique for the one-arm pull-up. Learn what a cool dude Martin is and how he went from zero to four one-arm pull-ups in a year while also achieving the full front lever now weighted with two kgs on his ankles. The full front lever pull-up Soon, the free one leg straddle planche, the handstand push up, plus the full from handstand push up for reps, the handstand press, the full pike handstand press, a 75 kg chin up, soon a solid one arm handstand, the hefesta, and build quite some muscle mass all at the same time. And finally, you will learn about common one arm pull-up misconceptions and get some advice about how to choose your progressions wisely. So make sure to stick around until the end of the video. So grab a coffee and let's go. Part one, the neglected skill. The one arm pull-up. The beauty of this skill lies in its simplicity, both in its technical execution and the journey to get there. So why is it? so rare to see actually well done, clean one-arm pull-ups? Why is it that there are so many one-arm pull-up tutorials with bad advice out there? Pulling yourself up with two arms is easy, right? Well, pulling yourself with one arm is not. For most people, it takes years and years of heavy weighted pull-ups to learn this skill combined with specific technical work. Training for it is actually quite straightforward. And there are just a few things that we need to be mindful of regarding technique. In other words, it's boring, it's repetitive, and it takes time and consistency. So we naturally look for shortcuts. We look for the magic secret exercise or method. We do single arm eccentrics when we can't even pull up 30 kgs for a few reps. We kick like mules and kip like crossfitters. We rotate so much to make it a neutral grip pull up and make the closing easier, not with us. Let's look at the one arm pull up skill tree, as well as at a few technical things we need to be mindful of. Here it is, it's boring, it's simple, and it's straightforward. Let's go through it together. Ring rows. The first step is to learn to execute ring rows the right way. No shit, it's one of the exercises we almost always need to correct in our athletes, even if they're extremely seasoned. Press your scapulas. Keep your rib cage in a neutral position. Focus on feeling the tension right here. Keep your elbows nice and close to the body. Get a nice shortened contraction up top. Do not actively try to retract at the bottom. Do so at the top by pulling the shoulder blades together without opening the chest exaggeratedly. While you keep improving and getting stronger in your ring rows, you will want to try to hit your vertical lat fibers as well. Can pull up use the lat pull down or use bats. This is not a tutorial on how to learn your first pull up, but if you want one, comment down below right now. Here you will focus on a slight depression. Don't exaggerate it, otherwise the shoulders will slide up as soon as you bring a slight bend in your elbows. Make sure to keep those shoulders down while pulling your elbows into the ground and bring the top of the sternum in the direction of the pull up bar while looking up towards it. Once you have reached anywhere between 8 and 15 reps in the pull-up, it will depend on your technique, individual genetics, and how solid they look, you can start loading them. If you can do 8 clean pull-ups, you most probably can do 6 with 2.5 kgs attached. Test it. If technique suffers, you will need to work on further improving your bodyweight pull-ups. Now that you're doing weighted pull-ups, 
The goal is to keep improving your one rep max, working mostly in a one to six rep range. There is no magic number, but usually around the 40 to 50% mark of your 1RM, you're probably ready to test one arm archer, one arm pull up with ring at elbow height, which looks like this. First, you will focus on the lower range of motion, making sure your activation is smooth and you don't stress the upper range of motion too much. For now, the upper range of motion work is done by progressively adapting to higher loads for weighted pull-ups, since it's easier to scale those nice and slowly. You need to progress slowly and in a controlled manner. The one arm pull-up is extremely stressful on the elbow joint, activating badly at the bottom part of the movement or stressing the closing too much too early will cause annoying elbow pain. And once it's there, good luck getting rid of it. We will look at how to program sets reps progression and how to avoid injuries as much as possible later. The next progressions are full rom archer one and pull up with the ring on elbow height variations in combination with the ring on shoulder height one arm pull ups. All while still working on increasing your one rep max. For most people, the variation here is very big, plus minus 75% of their body weight in the pull up one rm is where you're in a safe range to start working a bit more directly on the one arm pull up. At this point, there are different paths you can take depending on individual preference. The climber method. Half roms with hand on biceps, half roms with hand on shoulder, full roms with hand on shoulders. These are the progressions you will go through. Especially when doing half rom work, don't forget to still spend time in the upper rom using ring on elbow height archers or top range. Partials. One arm on shoulder is possible in the full range of motion for some. For others, the helping arm is too much in the way here. The same holds true for the hand on biceps. In these cases, option B can be a good choice. The Karukula. Using a counterweight can be an extremely good way to directly work on this skill progressively. The setup can be a bit of a pain in the ass and it only makes sense with loads that make about 5-10% to of your body weight. Everything above is simply an archer pull-up. P.S. Throughout this phase, you're still doing weighted pull-ups or chin-ups as your main work. Good. If you're able to do a few reps with hand on shoulders or a few reps with 2.5 kg resistance, you can test your first free one arm pull up. Use a slight false grip. This will help immensely. Start with a slight depression. Keep your other arm close to the body. Stay as straight as possible. Relax your lower body if possible. Try to avoid throwing your legs forward. Avoid kicking at all costs. If you do, it means you're still too weak for this progression. Squeezing your glutes can be an option as well. Don't raise your shoulder to cut range of motion and stay depressed all the way through. And pull your elbow close to your body, if anatomically possible. Wonderful. You made it. Now it's important to put your ego aside and not put a one arm pull up in your plan just because you managed one. More on that in the next section. Part 2. Martin. Now we will give you a closer look to this exceptional athlete. As we mentioned in the beginning, this athlete has achieved a ton of skills in quite a short time, but working on them all at the same time. He trains 6 out of 8 days with 2 tricking slash leg sessions and 4 upper days. Undoubtedly, he has excellent genetics especially for pulling and body composition. His maintenance kilocalories are around the 3800 to 4000 kilocalories a day, cutting usually done at 3.6k and bulking at 42 on average. His weight usually lays around 76 to 82 kgs, depending on the face. That being said, we will look at the one arm pull-up and the one arm pull-up work only. This video is already long enough as it is. In fact, if you're enjoying it and you're still around, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Over the course of the last year, Martin has trained for the one arm pull-up twice a week, never more, never less. The work always consisted of a specific technical exercise with almost no progression over the course of the mesocycle weighted pull-ups or weighted chin-ups, certain weighted pull-up variations or other pull accessory work. When we first started working together, we had no specific one-arm pull-up work in the plan. We focused simply on improving strength in the pull-up 
and building muscle mass using an undulating pattern with a higher and a lower rep day in combination with some scapula activation work he needed badly as you can see from these archers his shoulder is very very elevated his strength was already quite decent after the first mesocycle we tested the archer one on pull-ups again looking much better already Given the results of these tests, three to four reps, we introduced half range of motion ring at elbow height archers, only two sets per session, twice a week before the main pull-up work. Little tip on the side here, do your warm-ups for the pull-up, then do these archers, then do your main set in the pull-ups. We didn't put any progression on the specific work. In rare cases, we will add a set in the third or fourth training week if RPE drastically drops on these. We see these as technical accessories to learn the specific one arm movement and don't push progressions on them, except if we know that we can safely do so. The next mesocycle, we increase the reps to a one times two, one times one. At the end of the next deload, we tested full ROM ring on elbow and ended up with three to four reps. So we put singles for two times one in the plan, rinse and repeat. A few mesocycles after, we tested the one arm pull up on the rings at shoulder height. Since a few clean reps were possible, we integrated ring one arm pull ups at elbow height with pauses on top. On one day, we will use this variation to work on the top range of motion and ring one arm pull ups shoulder height on the other day. We generally move in the one to three rep range. The steam for Martin looked like this. Build up to three reps, RP7 over a few mesocycles. Go to singles with a tempo paused partial rep variation. This can be a three seconds concentric, pause on top, pause at 90 degrees, pause at 90 degrees, plus pause on top. In case, add weight 2.5 to 5 kgs. The next step was testing the hand on bicep half rums and we put them in the plan since doubles moved well and triples were possible. This was done once a week while keeping the ring on elbow variation shown here on the other day. Rinse and repeat again. While this specific work was being done, Martin reached a 1RM of 75 kgs in the chin up. Yes, the pull up is more specific to the one arm pull up, but we still use variation in grip from time to time, every 4 to 12 months to avoid overuse injuries. Just as in the skill tree we mentioned before, we moved on to hand on shoulders, full and half rumps. Once a few of these were possible, we tested the first free one arm pull up. And of course, we didn't put it in the plan. What the f what do you mean? Of course you didn't put it in the plan. Yep, his one arm pull up was still a one rep max. If you're extremely gifted, you might get away with just putting it in the plan. You will build margin soon enough. But the risks outweigh the rewards here. The buffered work is what got him here and we simply kept doing it, building further margin. Once two one arm pull ups were possible, one good and one bit ugly, we integrated two singles per week while keeping hand on shoulder work on the other day. Now our boy can do four consecutive one arm pull ups in training. Part 3. Misconceptions. What about eccentrics? This is probably the first one arm pull up tutorial you have seen that didn't have a single eccentric variation in there. Why is that? Do we think they are evil? No, we don't. There is a big but. If there had been a point in Martin's plan where it might have made sense to add eccentric one arm pull ups, it would probably have been after he performed his first successful one arm pull up. Since the work done until then had worked out so well though, there was absolutely no need for it. The mistake most people make is starting eccentrics way too early, especially in one arm chin ups when looking at the idoportal movement where it's common to do absurd volumes lowering yourself into movement which is way over your capacities. We can usually load around 20% more on eccentrics compared to concentrics. Doing an eccentric one arm pull up when we can do barely a few ring archers or a few pull ups is way over the 20% mark, thus making the risk for a bicep rupture or year long elbow pain extremely high. This doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It's just a completely unnecessary risk, which makes it 
a stupid choice. We have coached people that have become extremely efficient in the one-arm pull-up pattern by doing so. And they're even able to close an ugly kipped one-arm chin-up, but effectively can pull more than 30, 40 kgs in a pull-up and have been fighting with elbow pain for years. It's just not worth it. But I did it without weighted pull-ups. Well, I actually did as well. That doesn't mean it's the way to go. If there is one movement I am personally gifted at, it's the one-arm pull-up. I learned the one-arm pull-up before even pulling any weight on a pull-up and quickly reached seven to eight clean reps per arm. Back then, I was randomly doing archers and could do 40 pull-ups in a row. The first time I attached weight to a belt, I did a 30 kgs times 10. This is rare. I never had problems with my elbows either, despite being someone who is generally extremely injury prone. To be honest, I got lucky and didn't even know it at the time. It was only once I started coaching people that I learned that it was a gift. Before, I generally thought that having a few one-arm pull-ups was completely normal for most serious athletes. And this is the problem with gifted athletes. By teaching the one-arm pull-up, as I learned it, I'd injure most of our athletes in no time. What about the one-arm chin-up? It's a personal choice, but if you learn the one-arm pull-up, you will usually get two one-arm chin-ups as a present, if you do some chin-ups as main work at some point as well. The one-arm chin-up has a bigger risk of injuring the biceps, especially if you're rushing the progressions. The lower range of motion of the one-arm chin-up is similar to the one-arm pull-up, but the upper range of motion is way harder on the one-arm pull-up. Learning the one-arm pull-up directly will ensure that you're ready for multiple one-arm chin-ups. In conclusion, I hope that this tutorial slash case study helps you finally achieve your first one-arm pull-up without running into any injuries. Even though our YouTube channel is still very small, I have decided to put more effort into it over the next year, since it's the kind of content I truly enjoy creating. A subscription, a like and a share goes a long way and really helps us to get this kind of content out to more people. Thank you and see you next time.